I'm Ron Strickland. This webcast is one of a series in which I'm providing some brief lectures and commentaries on topics from the courses I teach in literature and cultural studies. This particular episode is one of a series on William Shakespeare's play, Othello, the Moor of Venice. In another webcast, I've said something about the social context in which the play was written and the setting of Venice. Here, I'm going to describe the characters and begin to look at the plot. So, the characters, we have Othello, he's a moor, the term is sometimes used interchangeably with a black person, but more specifically would be someone from North Africa. And he, he's a military leader who's a kind of an outsider in this society, but he's highly regarded and they need him. Then there's Desdemona. Desdemona is a young girl who's very beautiful, very much desired by other men. She falls in love with Othello. We have Iago, and Iago is probably the most interesting character in the play. He's a soldier under Othello. And he's been passed over, as he sees it, for a promotion, and he's really bitter about this. I also get the sense, at least, and I think you will too, that Iago is just one of these people who's going to be bitter. If it wasn't this, it would be something else. He's just not going to be happy. He's going to make sure that other people are unhappy around him. The 19th century poet and critic Samuel Taylor Coleridge described Iago's character as one of motiveless malignity. Just mean-spirited. And he gives some possible motives. He says, well, I was passed over for a promotion I really deserve, and the person who got the promotion didn't really deserve it. That's a possible motive. He says, I don't like the way society is changing. In the old days, you knew that if you served loyally in the hierarchical rank order, when your turn came, you would be preferred. That's not the way it is now. Anything can happen. The world's turned upside down. He suggests that he's too blunt, too low class, and he's being disrespected because of that. He even comes up with the idea that Othello may have been sleeping with his wife. There's no evidence of that anywhere in the play, except for Iago mentions it a couple of times. And finally, here's this black man getting the most beautiful, most desirable young white girl available in the city. It's just not right. He's just not going to stand for it. So we have race and class and concern about the patriarchal control of women. All of these things at different times, Iago will dredge up as possible reasons why he's so bitter. None of them really reasonably can justify his actions. So watching him manipulate Rodrigo, Cassio, Desdemona, Emilia, Iago's wife, and Othello most of all, could be, at least for me, painful to watch. You just know it's not going to end well. And all the characters who one might admire are, are being duped and manipulated by this evil, malignant character, Iago. So the other characters then, Rodrigo is a rich young nobleman who, who's been paying suit to Desdemona, and Iago will manipulate him and use him for his own purposes. Rabantio is Desdemona's father. He has a, a limited part at the beginning of the play. Bianca, is a prostitute or a courtesan will have a small part. The Duke and Cassio, who's the lieutenant. Cassio is the soldier who's more refined than Iago. He's the soldier that Othello has promoted over Iago. But first I'll give you just a plot diagram and, and this PowerPoint will be on the webpage. Scene one opens with Iago and Rodrigo arguing about Desdemona. And Rodrigo is upset with Iago 
because Iago has promised Rodrigo that if Rodrigo will give him money, he'll get him access to Desdemona. And it seems that Iago has taken the money and uh, Rodrigo has lost out. So they're arguing. But Iago says to Rodrigo, don't worry, you'll still get her. By the way, she has eloped with Othello and her father doesn't even know it. So the opening scene is Iago and Rodrigo outside Bravantio's window, waking him up, saying, your daughter has been stolen. She's run off with an old black ram, and your grandsons are going to be beastly. You'll have monsters for, for progeny. So they raise, they raise Bravantio, and Bravantio goes to the council and says, you have to do something about this to the duke. You have to do something. My daughter's been stolen. She's run off with Othello, and he should be imprisoned immediately. So they bring Othello in, and first, they need Othello because there's war brewing in Cyprus. And he's the military commander. They have to have him. And Othello says, well, okay, uh, but I trust me, your daughter wanted to marry me. So they bring Desdemona into the court, and she confesses her love for Othello much to her father's dismay. As he leaves the court, Brabantio gives this warning to Othello. Look to her, Moor, if thou hast eyes to see. She has deceived her father and made thee. Brabantio goes away unhappy, and Othello and Desdemona go off to Cyprus to fight the war. She wants to be with him even near the battlefield. She's so in love with him. She also seems to kind of like the idea of traveling around and being in the middle of the action. Act two, Iago and Desdemona arrive in Cyprus before Othello, and even before Othello arrives, the Turkish fleet, their fleet is scattered by a storm, so the battle doesn't even happen. So the next scene in act two, they, they have a victory celebration. Iago devises a plan to get Cassio drunk, because he knows that when Cassio is drunk, he fights. And so he gets Cassio drunk, gets him into a fight, and Cassio gets arrested. And now Cassio can't be lieutenant. He's been fired from the job. Then Iago, in Act Three, will go to Cassio and say, look, I know it's terrible. You've been fired. You really didn't deserve to be fired just for one night of drunkenness. Let me help you get your job back. Uh, I think if, if you talk to Desdemona, she can persuade Othello that you really should be given a second chance. Iago is the common thread, right? <laughs> and he goes to Othello and says, I think Cassio is trying to seduce your wife. So when Desdemona comes to Othello and says, give him another chance, Othello thinks that she really loves him more than she loves Othello. So he doesn't pay attention to her. Finally, in Act 4, Iago manipulates Othello so much that he gets really angry at Desdemona for nothing. She doesn't know what's going on, and Othello just kind of goes crazy. Iago is channeling these different people in the direction that their prejudices may have already prepared them for. He's working on Othello's anxiety about why this beautiful young white woman would want to marry an older black guy like him. It's the little seed in the back of his mind. He's working on Cassio's desire to get into Othello's good graces, and Cassio is so nervous about approaching Othello that it's kind of easier for him to imagine someone else approaching Othello and arguing on his behalf instead of him just going straight forward to Othello and saying, can I have my job back? The idea of having Desdemona argue for him is appealing to him for that reason. Iago is working on the assumptions of the other people in the society that it's kind of strange to see this old man, this older black man with this young white girl. It's kind of a strange couple. And all this time, by the way, Rodrigo, up until now, is still in the action. Remember Rodrigo? We began with him in Act 1, Scene 1, under the window before Rabantio's house, Desdemona's house. He's the one who's bankrolling 
Iago. Well, Act 5, things began to come to a conclusion. Iago needs to get rid of some people. So he tells Rodrigo that he needs to assassinate Cassio. Rodrigo tries, but he doesn't succeed. But when Rodrigo does not succeed and help comes, Iago pretends to come to Cassio's rescue and kills Rodrigo. I have been leaving out Emilia so far, but Emilia has an important role to play. Emilia is Desdemona's maid and Iago's wife. For some reason, Iago has been pestering Emilia to steal a certain handkerchief from Desdemona. This handkerchief, we learn, is one that Othello's mother has given to him, and he attaches a special sentimental value to it. He has given it as a gift to Desdemona. After Desdemona drops the handkerchief on the floor, Emilia picks it up and gives it to her husband, Iago. Iago then uses the handkerchief to suggest that Desdemona has given it to Cassio, and Othello believes that his wife has been unfaithful with Cassio and that she has given this sentimental gift of his to her lover. So, in a state of jealous misapprehension, Othello kills his innocent, loving, and faithful young wife, Desdemona. When Emilia discovers the dying Desdemona and confronts Othello about what he has done, she will realize what has happened. Iago's schemes and manipulations will be unmasked and Othello will face death in grief and repentance and looking rather foolish. With that, I'll conclude this video. But as always, if you have questions or comments, send me an email.